set in a post-apocalyptic world, hordes of monsters emerge from mines and wreak havoc, killing millions and destroying cities. A new Department of Homeland Security was created, and eventually the creatures were annihilated. Protective gates were built on the former mine sites to prevent future intrusions. The scene changes to 15 years later, and the world has begun to recover. We then get introduced to Laura, who survived the initial attack and works at a school. She has a persistent but unsuccessful admirer, Milton, whom she often turns down for dates. To Milton's surprise, Laura agrees to go for dinner with him. Laura and her ex-husband Dave have a 15-year-old son named Tyler, who spends his days at the skate park with his friends and girlfriend Maddie. Tyler plays computer games in his free time and becomes a point of contention between his parents, who is separated after his birth. Meanwhile, the situation escalates as an eclipse approaches, signaling a potential monster invasion. Seismic activity increases, and protective dome personnel conduct emergency checks. Troubling news spreads, including reports of mass fish extinctions and migration patterns resembling those before the first apocalypse. Tyler is spending the weekend with his father when Dave receives a call from his friend Ted, claiming that the next apocalypse will happen soon and that Dave should urgently bring his family to the shelter. On the other hand, a monster silently infiltrates the protective dome. Ascending the stairs, Laura calls Dave in a panic after seeing the news and insists he should bring Tyler home. Milton has secured a shelter, which Laura believes is their only chance of survival. Dave assures her that Tyler is safe with him. Meanwhile, Tyler receives a text message and quietly leaves the house while his father is on the phone. Laura frantically urges Dave to bring Tyler to her immediately, as his house is not secure. Dave agrees and goes to Tyler's room, only to find him missing. Milton rushes Laura, warning her that the shelter is filling up and they must hurry. Laura explains that she cannot find Tyler. Milton uses Tyler's phone number to locate him at the skate park with Maddie. Maddie is anxious because her parents left her alone and she pleads with Tyler not to abandon her. Tyler promises that he will never leave her. That's when, all of a sudden, a swarm of birds appear and panic ensues as people in the park flee. Dave heads to the park to search for Tyler but becomes stuck in a massive traffic jam. Determined to find his son, Dave abandons his car and continues looking for him. Meanwhile, under the protective dome, a worker checks the instruments and is suddenly attacked and torn apart by a monster. Soldiers attempt to shoot the creature, but it appears their bullets have no effect. Back at the skate park, Tyler and Maddie watch in horror as panic ensues. Soon, Dave arrives and Tyler explains that Maddie had nowhere else to go and he couldn't leave her behind. Moments later, Laura, accompanied by Milton, arrives in a car and takes everyone to a shelter where they have reserved seats. With just over an hour until the eclipse, the city is in complete chaos, with people trying to escape and traffic jams everywhere. Finally, they reach the shelter, but it is guarded by the military, who only allow women and children inside. Dave asks Tyler to take care of his mother and sends them to the shelter. At first, Tyler enters a shelter but then decides to run back to his father. Laura and Maddie chase after him as Tyler claims he won't go in without Dave. Before Laura could convince Tyler, it is revealed that the shelter is completely filled and there are no available spots. Without wasting any time, they rush to their car. Dave suggests going to Ted's hideout in the desert, while Milton suggests hiding at the nearby school, which has a basement. Unfortunately, they encounter a traffic jam with dozens of cars blocking the road. As they abandon the car, an earthquake begins and the sun gets shadowed by an eclipse. Soon, monsters start emerging from under a protective dome, filling the city with their crawling and flying presence. Dave suggests leaving the city, as it is much safer elsewhere. However, Milton, the owner of the car, disagrees and believes he knows how to save everyone. A fight ensues between Dave and Milton, but it is interrupted when a flying monster grabs Milton and takes him into the sky. 
Laura screams in distress, but Dave quickly forces her into the car as they try to escape. They drive along the canal, with Dave reassuring everyone that everything will be fine and they will find a way out. Unfortunately, the car runs out of gas, and Dave decides to search for a replacement. They come across several cars ahead, and Dave gets into one of them. To his surprise, he finds an elderly man hiding in the back seat. They notice a large bloody monster that resembles a bull passing by the car, but it doesn't notice them and starts chewing on a body nearby. Dave quietly rolls the car back to Laura and the kids, and now both cars are parked side by side. However, they need to figure out how to shift to the new car. However, the bull notices them. That's when the elderly man gets out of the car and throws salt from a jar at the bull, causing it to stop. This allows Laura and the kids to run into Dave's car. The bull then attacks the man, tearing him apart. Fortunately, Dave manages to drive away. As hordes of monsters continue to swarm the city from all sides, Dave drives down an abandoned road in the mountains until they reach Ted's hideout. The hideout is a solid concrete bunker with cameras on the roof, but no one responds when they knock on the doors. Inside, Ted is sitting behind a monitor with a gun pointed at his neck while someone stands behind him. A herd of monsters approaches the shelter, running straight towards it. Just in time, the doors of the bunker open and they all rush inside. Dave joyfully embraces Ted, who is accompanied by his wife Stella and a military man named Corporal Garrett Jensen. The monitors show the monsters attempting to break down the door, creating tension among everyone present. Maddie asks how the monsters can sense their presence, wondering if they can see through walls. Garrett explains that they react to light, heat, and possibly even the soul. He believes that they are the devil's offspring and feed on souls. Laura asks if Garrett is religious, to which he replies that he is today. Garrett shares a story about his experience during the first judgment day when he worked at a refinery. He managed to survive by hiding in a pond of salty mud, while the monsters killed 150 of his colleagues and friends. He emphasizes that the devil rules on this day. As Garrett tells his story, a creature resembling a centipede crawls from the street into a small hole in the mesh covering the window. Garrett volunteers to be on duty, and Ted invites the rest to stay as well, giving Dave a meaningful look. However, Garrett suddenly draws his gun, forcing Dave to drop the knife he had picked up. Garrett explains that he found this hideout while trying to hide, and although Ted initially opposed his presence, Stella kindly let him in. He survived once before, and he will survive again, no matter what. Tyler throws himself at Garrett, attempting to take the gun away from him. However, Garrett easily throws him aside. Meanwhile, Dave consoles the corporal. At that point, the creature bursts out of the wall towards Stella. Ted quickly removes it from his wife's neck and covers it with salt while Dave grabs a gun from Garrett and shoots it. More monsters emerge, but the group manages to fend them off. They restrain Garrett and attempt to stop Stella's bleeding. Suddenly, Dave spots help to arrive from the monsters in the form of a massive bull. He realizes that they are trapped and need to escape the bunker. The bull relentlessly tries to break down the doors. Ted hesitates, fearing that his wife won't survive outside. However, Stella urges him to go with everyone else, revealing the existence of an underground passage leading to the mountains. Garrett convinces Ted to take him along, as he has a car with a full tank of gas and can drive them to the gate where the creatures originated. Despite their initial skepticism, they agree to go. Armed with an array of weapons from Ted's arsenal, they manage to escape through the tunnel. They reach the car, but Stella falls ill. Tensions rise as Dave and Laura argue, with Laura blaming him for not being in the shelter earlier. Suddenly, Tyler spots a dead monster on the side of the road. Maddie approaches it, only to get captured by long tentacles emerging from a hole in the ground. Tyler and Dave come to her rescue. Garrett offers his assistance, and Dave cuts the ropes binding his hands. They continue their ascent to the mountaintop, where they witness a devastated city in flames. Descending back to the car, they discover that it refuses to start. 
That's when monsters appear at the mountaintop and rush towards them. Garrett desperately tries to start the engine while Stella watches the approaching horde. She then notices the gun in her husband's hands, grabs it, and exits the car. She completely ignores Ted's pleas to hand it over. Stella walks towards the monsters, aware of her impending doom. Ted calls out to her in tears, but Dave forcibly pushes him into the car. At the last possible moment, they manage to escape with hordes of monsters chasing them. Along the way, they pick up a radio signal reporting that most shelters have been overrun and destroyed. Laura places her hand on Dave's shoulder as he comforts her. They arrive at the gate, finding it deserted but open. Garrett reveals that the hideout is in the basement, but they need to restore power. Garrett and Dave take on the task while the others search for a first aid station to tend to Ted's back wound. Dave successfully restores the electricity, and Garrett explains that the gate was prepared for a second invasion, with tons of salt pumped into it. However, the well was too deep. They regroup with the others, only to hear the monstrous roar and discovered a bloodied corpse. With two hours remaining until the end of the eclipse, Garrett suggests taking refuge in a chemical warehouse with impenetrable doors. Unexpectedly, a monster attacks Garrett, but he and Dave manage to defeat it, attracting more monsters in the process. Garrett swiftly escapes through a door and seals it shut, injecting himself with something as his veins turn black and swell. Dave reunites with his family and asks Tyler to keep his mother safe in his absence. Determined to even the odds, Dave plans to divert salt water through the tank pipes to repel the monsters. That's when Laura kisses Dave and urges him to be careful. Dave navigates through the ventilation system, witnessing a monster devouring its prey. His objective is to close the taps near the feeding monster. Despite the monster's pursuit, Dave successfully opens a faucet and collects water in containers. As he climbs back, the monster senses his presence and lunges at him. Dave fights back, dousing the creature with salt until it crumbles into dust. Meanwhile, the others are hunted down and surrounded by monsters. Tyler defends them with his gunfire. Suddenly, Dave's voice echoes through the loudspeaker, instructing them to activate the fire alarm. Surrounded by monsters closing in, Ted tells Tyler to protect the family and valiantly charges at the monsters with an axe. Multiple creatures overwhelm him, but Tyler continues to shoot, running out of ammunition. Tyler activates the fire alarm, triggering jets of salt water that drench the monsters from all sides, causing them to disintegrate in agony. So while the others are saved, Ted dies. Soon, the eclipse comes to an end and the monsters return through the gate. The children, accompanied by Laura, rush to a safe area while Garrett is standing there with a gun. He shoots Tyler, claiming that he won't survive anyhow because God is taking the day off. Laura makes an effort to cover her son with her body. Unfortunately, Dave arrives just in time and hits Garrett in the head with a fire extinguisher. When Garrett collapses to the ground, Dave embraces Tyler and Laura. That's when a huge monster shows up and lunges at Garrett, slowly engulfing him. They rush into the medical facility and prepare a salty concoction in a cylinder as the monster approaches. Although it kicks down the doors, Dave is still able to throw a canister of mixture his way. The monster roars wildly as it explodes and then disintegrates into ash. The movie ends as Laura hugs Dave and they go inside. The monsters are gone, but everything else is destroyed. With that being said, this is it for today's video. What did you guys think of the movie? Let us know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.